Ed, Pilots and Paws started a couple of years ago. Tell us how you've progressed since we first heard Debbie talking about the formation of this group. Well, currently, right now, we have uh, hundreds of pilots across the, across the United States and even some now in Australia as members of this organization. I would say you could have an animal transported anywhere in the United States based on whatever destination you need. It's 100% coverage, essentially, in the United States. Okay, now tell us about the animals who are transported. What is their situation? You're basically rescuing animals who would otherwise be euthanized? Actually, that's the goal. What happens is the, the rescue coordinators are the people who really do the brunt of the work. They'll identify animals that they feel they can place into foster homes. They'll bring them out of the shelters to save them from being euthanized, foster them for as long as they need to until they can find a home for them. So we provide the transportation a, from the shelters to the foster community or from a foster to a, a forever home. So it's all volunteer work. Essentially, we can also set it up Pony Express style where a pilot will fly a certain leg and another pilot will meet him at the destination airport and fly the next leg. Essentially, it's Pony Express. All right, I guess the question I had when I first found out about this group was why airplanes? It seems overkill to transport a dog in an airplane. Now, two things. One, pilots always like a purpose to fly. So it's not flying out for flying for a hamburger, you're flying for a mission that has value. Secondly, with the advent of the internet, the shelters used to be able to only reach the people who walked in their doors to look at the animals available. Now through the internet, people can identify animals literally across the country that they would like to rescue. Now the only thing left to do is get the transportation arranged so that we can bring the dog to the rescuer. What are the qualifications required? Is there any special experience or, or type of aircraft? As long as you have your private pilot license and you're willing to fly, that's all you need to do. I guess there's probably less risk of litigation if something does go wrong than if you were carrying people. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And they, and they don't complain about your landing either. <laughs> a final question, do dogs like hanging their head out the window of an airplane as much as they do a car? They, actually, they go to sleep very well. They lay, lay back there when the engine starts. Most of them will just go, go to sleep right away. All right, if someone wants to get involved in this and get a hold of the organization, it's uh, www.pilots, the letter N, pause.org. And they can go to the website and volunteer. Once they're registered, they can have that full access to animals that need transport, and they can offer their services on that same website. Thank you much, Ed. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by Freedom Through Control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control.